I love these so much. I'm not sure about you, right? I love these. I love these. Love, love, love these. I saw these on the runway when they first debuted, and I was like, fuck, what the fuck are these? They remind me a little bit of the Dolce Gabbana trainers that I think Lil Uzi Vert and a few other people, a few of those kind of like, you know, Sankar's rappers wear that really gaudy looking and have all the kind of bangles all over it. But I just love these because I'm a sucker for all black shoes. I think these that this version of a shock is something that I'd actually wear. I, remember, I mentioned a few times that I'm not really a big fan of shocks, but I love the the shock the shock store that goes all the way around. The thing that, the thing about a shock that I don't like is the same thing I don't like about the Vapor Max. The Vapor Max when you look down when you look when you look down on it when you look uh, down on your foot wearing a Vapor Max. You can't see the bubble. It doesn't protrude out. I'd like it to protrude out a bit more. It kind of tucks in. So it kind of looks like you're not wearing anything. It kind of looks a bit weird. And because I'm so used to wearing chunky shoes with soles that kind of protrude outwards, I kind of like that. So these shocks do a good way of kind of displaying that because the shock goes around all around the side. If you can see from this picture here, I'll, I'll link in the show notes anyway if you can check out. But it's basically a black shock and the shock bits go all the way through them. So instead of ending up just at the heel, you have this little look how that kind of protrudes out there you see it kind of like pops out there a little bit more on that side there that's what i love to see so they look amazing they've got these gold chains around them all black condom come to garçon logo on the tongue the black pairs are obviously my fave it's sort of like a lace i think um applique on the upper i'm sure maybe similar to the trousers they look amazing i'm not sure if they're just gonna be women's only but i don't care i'm gonna try and get them they're out soon i think the end of the week aren't they May 20th, no? When they're going to be out? Oh, there's an update here, actually. June 14th, so the end of the week, they're going to be out. But again, I'm a big fan of them. Uh, Nike, Comme des Garçons, Nike Shock TL. So, so, so good. I'll keep the chain. I think some of the comments said take the chain off. But I think, again, I don't know if they're going to look like this on me, though, because I've got a boat of a foot. I'm a size 10 UK. So I'm sure if they're going to look as good on me like this, but I hope so. They do. But they just look, I don't know why they look so good. The white and the black pair, they look fucking banging. I'd wear these instantly, like so good. They might be women's only though, hopefully not. But wow, 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 wow. I'm all over them, so, so, so all over them. Here's a picture of them from 10 Coral Summer uh, in Seoul. But again, big fan of these shoes. They look fucking amazing. But again, I'm a sucker for these just black, big black shoes from my Triple S's to my Dr. Martins, Jaden Boots to my Air Force Ones to the Yeezy 700s, which are not big, not, not the biggest shoe in the world, but it's still quite wide looking wise. I don't know what it is about these shoes that really kind of get me going, but I love them. Love them all. Love them all, man. But yeah, check them out. They're going to be out on June 14th on in all your regular places. No, I think Dover Street are going to have a raffle for them actually at the moment. So you can register to enter the raffle at Dover Street Mark if you go check out the site as well, if you're interested in those. Again, probably not much resale value for you resellers out there. But again, if, you actually, if you're about wearing your shoes, to forget rep reselling these are probably the ones you're going to want to wear like these and some like you know um what should you call it some pants from maybe joint junior maybe you could get a pair of them i've got a pair of junior pants i could wear that probably look quite cool with these <sighs> they just look so hard man i'm so all over them amazing shoes all over them like salt and chips mate Anyway, let's move on here. What else is next on the list here? We have this week's summer, sorry, this week's sneaker drops from Hypebeast as well. A little collection of shoes that are dropping this week, most of which I'm going to pass on and have no interest in purchasing apps whatsoever. Has anyone got a bit of fatigue with trainers? I'm, I, am I the only one that's kind of trainer fatigued, sneaker fatigued? I know I am. I st I've haven't bought... I don't really buy trainers when they meant when they come out. I usually just buy them after the fact on the stock or something. I don't really want to get involved in the waking up and checking my flipping Nike app and all that sort of stuff and going online registering for a raffle on end or, or any other nonsense place that does it or retweeting and leaving a comment. I hate all that shit. But in general, I'm just really tired of drops. I don't care. If the stuff that I want is out and I like it and I'm browsing and I'm because mostly I always browse Sense and Goodhood and places for clothes and stuff. And then I happen to stumble across shoes. And most of it is just like basics, like a pair of Vans Old Schools, a pair of uh, nice um, Nike Ep um, Epics, a pair of nice Air Maxes, a pair of nice Adidases. Um, just some classic shoes. I'll just stumble upon them. Oh, yeah, that'll be quite cool, Max. Some nice New Balances that I might find on Tresbien or something. But I rarely, if ever, I'm seeking out trainers. It's always I always find them as a byproduct of me checking out some clothes I want to purchase. I'm not sure if people else have the same... Uh, thing as me but if you do leave a comment and let me know but I'm, I'm, I'm a bit trainer fatigued man i'm not i'm kind of over 
shoes in general. I don't really get excited about many things apart from the you know, fucking fancy comedy gun. So, uh, Nike Shock TL, which is right here again. Again, I love these. Look at the shape of them. But again, m- m- maybe it's just me. I don't know. Um, Gray, uh, they've got so that, and then they've got a Nike Air Max Plus uh, color flip black, a Nike TN. Again, not for me. They're probably going to be big with the kids on Instagram. They look like a very Instagram friendly shoe, looks like for the most part. It's a grey upper and all the kind of accents are neon green with a little neon green swoosh. And the other shoes kind of flip the other way around with the purple accents and stuff. Again, not for me. I'm not really that bothered about TNs. Don't really care. Um, then they've got the Nike Shock R4. This, this is the shock that I hate. The Nike Shock R4 uh, Black Glow. They looked horrendous. I just hate how it looks like on the front. Not really a fan of them. Coming out June 11th. Um, then there's an interesting one, right? The Supreme Air Jordan 14. Again, not something I'd, I'd probably wear, but I quite like them. I don't know why. Again, I'm, I'm really, a, I really commend Supreme for not choosing the easy option when it comes to their sneaker collabs. They could make so much money. They could make, they could have so much brand exposure. Mark, we don't need it, right? It's fucking Supreme. It's not some unknown brand. But they could do, they could easily hit out of the park if they did some like, you know, staple models. Air Max 90, Air Max 1. Um, Jordans, Jordan 1, 2, 3 to 4, uh, not 2 probably, take out, yeah, 1, 3 and 4, they could do um, Air Forces, which they've done, of course, high, mid, low, they could do MX 87s, which they've done already, 97s, which I think they've done already, have they 97s, I think they have, right, or was that undefeated, no, it's undefeated, right? I'm not sure if they've done 97s, they could do a plethora of shoes, right, but they tend to always pick the hardest ones to sell, or the ones that aren't the most hype, right, whether it's a, whether it's a, match court or court whatever it's called a blazer whether it's a jordan 14 who, who who have you heard speaking about jordan 14s in your life recently or you know be like bemoaning the fact that they can't get a jordan 14 it's flipping a it's really commendable that they do it to take such a big risk at a point because again like they said it just makes so much easy money just flipping jordan one colorways again and again and again but again i'm, I'm a big fan of these jordan 14s i think they look really cool i think the, the little dots are kind of little metal ball bearings right um with the white white with the black and then they got blue with black as well i, I like both colorways i wear them actually um, probably won't suit anything that i wear day to day but i quite like the look of them they probably might look better on smaller feet they probably look better with some shorts on but i i like the shoe man i think it looks pretty cool and those are coming out this thursday as well so to keep an eye out for that one june 13th um then we have a nike air max 90 python pack Again, Nike and their retros of Air Max 90s. My God, so terrible. And it's odd because there's so many vintage, there's so many Nike vintage catalogs or things that you might find from Boone to um, Asanya Mag that I have and other Japanese-based magazines which have a whole plethora of colorways of shoes that you could put, that you could kind of flip into Air Max 90s, whether it's Air Max 90s originals or other Air Maxes that will look so much better than all the stuff they put out. It's so un- it's so unusual that they do this. And, and the odd thing is that you'd think, okay, cool. Release your weird, crazy colors with, you know, in this kind of pack. And then in your core stores, like Foot Looker and JD Sports and whatever, maybe have the quintessential retro bog standard colorways. They don't do that either. They still have the shitty colorways in JD Sports too. So they don't kill on either side. The only way they're going to kill it is if they have a collaboration. And it guess what happens when they have a collaboration. They have a collaboration. They collaborate with somebody. They do a particular shoe color, which everyone loves. And then six months later, they distill it into a GR and then they kind of flip it and make it kind of commoditized. And now that shoe's not special anymore. It's such an annoying process they go through. It really, really frustrates me. There's so much rich colorway history in their own archive they could relate back to that would look much better than this shit. That's just terrible. Like, what is that? It's just terrible. Black upper with a green sort of like snake skin silhouette with what is that on the on the side there is that new bug or something like it's just the white pair is quite nice i think right they just, just just put out the white pair the white pair is probably better just take away that black one we don't need it or just flip it a bit more make it a bit more i don't know interesting just we don't need that black pair it's just a waste of time <sighs> but what do i know then we've got an ADS originals temper run pride is this for pride month again pride the commodities the commoditization of pride has been very interesting in the last few years right we've got pride month now uh, we've got brand, all brands under the sun incorporating the LGBTQ uh, flags and moniker into their shoes when most of these companies haven't really been, you know, advocates of the LGBTQ community. I'm, I'm interested to know what those kind of, what those people in those scenes actually think of these items in general. 
Like, if I was gay, I wouldn't be called be I would be called dead wearing any of these shoes, right? It just doesn't make any sense. I don't know. It's like gay pride. Once you've been to your, once you've been to one, are you gonna go to another one? Like, it's just like I don't know. If you're gay, you just live your life and you just carry on. You want you want to be accepted. You want it to be normal. The last thing you want to do is have this special. I don't know. Maybe I'm just speaking from a point of a straight male that I don't really understand. But I don't know. I wouldn't be called be. Uh, no, I, I, w- I would probably go to Pride, but I wouldn't be wearing Pride apparel. The most I'd have on is a flag, right? In a hat form or something. But I wouldn't have some shoes day to day so everyone knows, oh, guess what? I'm gay. People would know that. Sh- people would know my mannerisms or they would know if I tell them. It's not their business really, isn't it? What I do in the bedroom. I just don't understand. It's a very strange, peculiar thing. And again, what happens when these things don't sell and they all end up in the sales rack? Because ha- what, what percentage of the world is actually um, LGBTQ anyway? It's a weird thing. Especially if they're going to put it out as a GR. If it's out as a tier zero, cool enough, as a limited edition, fair. But if it's out on in all their different stores because they want everyone to know that they're supporting everyone, right? And flooding the market and then it all ends up in the sales rack, all ends up in kind of outlet stores. That doesn't look good either, does it? Like all the LGBTQ stuff is on the, is on the sale rack, marked down to like, you know, 50%. But again, what do I know? Next shoot, interesting. We've got the Jordan 4 fly, fly Knit, red and blue. Again, I don't know who needed this or why they did it, but I'm interested in the concept. It might be a good way to do a retro, actually incorporating some new technologies, making the shoe a bit lighter. The sole looks the same. The upper is different. Again, I'm not sure what relevance that has to do with anything. It's a lifestyle shoe, not performance. I get it. But again, the colorways, why? Why not just do a Fly Knit in the original bread and uh, what you call it? Um, University Blue. And the cements and stuff, right? And the tribute, whatever. Like, I don't know. I just don't get why you would do a fly knit of a Jordan 4 in these weird colorways. Like, in, in October, like Red October is, of course, easy colorways. And do, I just don't understand. It's going to end up in the sale rack. No one's going to buy this at full price. They're $220, like, insane. Available in June 14th. But again, I just don't get why you'd want to buy these at full price right now when you can just wait when they get on sale. They should have put them in, out in the OG colorways first. But again, you know, these people. Again, a Nike be true G- LGBTQ shoe. Like, this is horrible. An MX90 with four stripes on it. Done the red ray. Probably cut trying to copy John Geiger. Again, done shit. Just a horrible co- colorway. I don't see what the need of this is. Be true to collection. Who cares about that? No one. The jo- the Pat Area Jordan Pata 7 are quite nice. Again, not something I'd probably wear. But I think for the kids, they'll probably like the colorway. It's quite versatile. It reminds me a little bit of the Travis Scott Jordan 1. Um, I'm not really a fan of the, the logo on the midsole. I think that's a bit overdone. They're probably going to put that somewhere else or maybe maybe a bit tonal to kind of tone it down somewhat. But again, these guys are much more on the board than I am and they know what they, their kind of demographic wants. They don't want a Jordan that just looks like a different colorway. They want it to say what the collaboration is. So that's a good way to do it. So again, a good shoe that way, June 15th, and they're only $200. Again, what would you pick, right? This garbage Jordan flying it, right, in red and blue, or would you pick a Patera Jordan 7, right? That's going to come out in June 15th. And this in, in, this might be the first Jordan that they've collaborated on in Pata. Is it maybe the first Jordan? Which is strange because they're big boss. No, it's not. That's um, that's Pigal, isn't it? They're big on basketball. Um, These Dutch guys, I don't really think they've played much. I don't see a dude playing play football. So it's a weird collaboration regardless. But anyway, it doesn't matter. And they've got Neymar in the, in the lookbook as well, which is a bit weird. But maybe he might wear it day to day. He might, might be a friend of brand. But regardless, what would you rather wear? This Pat Jordan 7 or this garbage? And it's $20 more. Just like, it doesn't make any sense. Um, then we've got the Yeezy Boo 700 V2. Tempura again. I love it. It's a flip on the colorway that just came out recently. The V2s are probably my... I don't know. I probably prefer the, the V1s. The OGs. The, the, the Wave Runners, essentially. 700s. But I quite like this shape as well. I want to get um, the all black pairs coming out soon as well. These are coming out on June 15th. They're well made, well constructed. Um, they're super comfortable the centers in general they're very versatile they work with most shoes and again they're just a nondescript shoe they can flip them with most things i'm not not really a fan of the other yeezy personally mostly because they don't really fit my foot i've got a bit of a wide foot so this yeezy 700 is a great thing for me in general especially now since they've got elasticated they've got elastic on the tongue so you don't need to tie them too tightly and they stick on your foot better and they the sizing is worked out a bit more better than the other shoes i had than the first ones in gray so again, these are out June 15th, um, Easy Boost 700 Tefra. So it's like a grayish sort of colorway there. You have these Jordan 8s Quai 50s. I'm not even going to bother reading these fucking garbage. Bin them right now. Raining Champ Essex, Kyoto edition. 
Um, again, not for me, probably more so for the street where dad's out there. Reading Champ is, again, um, you know, a well-known purveyor of sweats and stuff and quality apparel in that regard. So maybe people might like that for that resistance. But again, I don't know who cares about Asics. Probably the bottom of all bottom collaborations. And I think nowadays, because kids are so obsessed with resale value and things that are hyped, they're just not going to get this. Like back in the day when we always buy sneakers, it was about buying the shoe that no one wanted, right? Deodora, Asics, like, you know, like looking for shit trying to make high-tech calls about finding gems now these kids just want the same old jordan one nike air max 90 air max one ada stan smith ada shelter it was the same sort of models converse one stars it doesn't really go deviate from those things so it's going to be half of them to kind of connect with millennials or kids on this it's going to be older customers such as myself but i'm not really a fan of them either then you've got the nike air max tailwind spirit uh, spirit teal which is nice colorway again maybe a nod to some of their archive colorways just a great shoe worked really well good colorways representative of what's going on in retro but also bringing it back fresh into what's happening now what aced it done well i'm not sure why they didn't do that on air max 90s but again maybe because it's a new model and they've got some fresh ideas but again big fan of that one coming out june 15th 160 dollars again what do you ever buy that or that jordan 4 up there like fucking hell then you've got this sx gel canyo um quite nice actually i wear these to run in these look quite interesting gel sole big branding on the side they look very interesting yeah i quite like this show oh i'd actually wear these g15 149 yeah um so quite a few twos out there that you could check out this is from the um this week's drops from hype beast they do a quite good feature of kind of rounding up some of the drops you should be checking out for i'll link it in the show notes for you guys to check out uh, this week's drops in sneakers in streetwear and everything in between